So there's a handy tool called the Sweep Profile 3D tool, which you'll find inside the tool palette and then under Sweep Profile 3D. If we click and drag this onto our canvas, I'm going to edit mode. I'm just going to navigate around it slightly, I rotate around and hold shift to get into a front view. And I'm going to change our material into something that's a little bit more visible and maybe a slightly darker color. Because this is a primitive object, we chose this from the 3D meshes. So all of these, these objects in here um, have initialized parameters because they're, they're computationally defined. So if we go down to the initialized part, we can see the parameters for this. This can be aligned to the X, Y, or Z axis. By default, it goes to the Y. And the reason that makes sense is that this axis here aligns with what you're seeing here. There are several points on this, and as I move these, you'll see them modify with the profile. And you'll see how it aligns up. By clicking anywhere inside this and moving it, I'll add a new point to this. Um, the points by default are curved. So if I click and I drag it off screen and then go back on again, you'll see it will change to a harsh uh, square, a, a non-curved, basically. So we can add as many points as we like to this and you can see it updating as we go and change our design into whatever you like. We can even save out our curved patterns and after we've done that, we can load them and just save them in somewhere on your own local hard drive. You can load that up and you can load in whatever patterns you like. We're modifying if you're doing standard sets of something and you want slight variations on it, but want to start from the same start point every time. So you can do something like this. Once you've done that and you, you, you've decided what your, your final look is going to be for your, for your model, you can just hit make polymesh 3D. This is the tool that we're currently using. As soon as I hit make, make Polymesh 3D and I accidentally hit it twice there, you'll see that there's a new to sub tool created. This is now a sculptable mesh. If we go down to the initialized parameters for here, we see that we've lost all of these um, profile parameters that we had to modify before. But because this is now a sculptable mesh, I'm pressing Shift F here so we can see it. Now we can actually do things with it that we couldn't previously. For example, if we change to our Z modeler tool, I'll press B, Z, and M go to the Z modeler tool. Now we have access to inserting edge loops, for example, like this, or taking a, a, a poly loop such as this one. I'll hover over this. I'll choose um, QMesh. I'll choose poly loop. And as you can see, if I change my brush size, I always change it down small when you're working with the Z modeler tool. It's much easier to see the direction that this orange line is pointing. I can choose to edit a poly loop in this direction or I can choose to go around the model like this and I can by simply dragging down I'm creating another wedge. So now suddenly we have extra details that we can put into our model um, such as details like this. We can add in extra loops. I'm adding in and then I'm pulling in. So suddenly we have uh, a lot more detail from whatever it was that we were deciding to make. Uh, obviously, the last point down here can be modified as well, so I'm going to control drag over that and then hold down Alt. So I'll mask everything except for this point. I'll press W to go into edit, uh, into transpose mode and move this point up. Um, and now we have a piece that if we decide to divide using either dynamic subdivision here or with subdivision levels. Um, we, we just hit the divide button, Control G, um, and we can get detail like that. Okay, hope this helps. It's a really handy tool. Thought you should know about it. Bye.